All right. Welcome back, Deep Divers. Ready for another fascinating trip through time. Absolutely. I'm excited for this one. This time we're heading to 18th century Scotland. Ah, Scotland. The land of whiskey, bagpipes, and some pretty intense social dynamics, right? Exactly. And smack dab in the middle of all the... Um, a poet. Poet, huh? So we're talking about someone who put pen to paper when it was a really different world, I bet. Oh, you have no idea. Now, I bet you haven't heard her name before. A lot of people haven't. I'll admit it's not ringing a bell. But I'm willing to wager you've heard her most famous work. Ever heard of a poem called There's Nay Nay Hmm. Nay Luck About the Hoose. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Isn't that the one about a sailor's wife? Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. That's the one. Super famous. Been passed down through generations and all that. Well, there you go. Proof that a good poem can really stand the test of time. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. Explore Gene Adams' story. Our journey's a bit like a historical jigsaw puzzle because the sources we have are kind of fragmented. Just little snippets of her life here and there. Ah, uh, so like those old family photo albums where you only have half the pictures and have to guess what's going on. Pretty much. So let's get started, shall we? <laughs> We know Jean Adam was born in 1704. Okay, 1704. Setting the scene. What was going on in Scotland at that time? Scotland was going through some uh, some growing pains, you could say. It had just unified with England in 1707 to form Great Britain. So lots of political and economic shifts happening. Ah, unification. Always brings its own set of challenges, doesn't it? Big time. So into this world comes Jean, born in Greenock, port town right on the River Clyde. Port town. Interesting. So lots of ships, trade, and... Probably a fair amount of hardship, too, right? You got it. And unfortunately, Jean's life was full of it. She lost both her parents at a young age. Oh, that's tough. Especially back then, losing your parents could really upend your whole life. Absolutely. And Jean's family had a strong maritime connection. So they faced. Yeah, life at sea back then was no walk in the park, storms, shipwrecks, you name it. Must have been a constant worry. Definitely. Now, despite the hardships, young Jean found solace in a rather surprising place. Literature. Literature. That's interesting. What kind of access would someone like her have had poetry back then? Well, it wasn't easy, that's for sure. But while she was working in domestic service, she somehow got her hands on the Countess of Pembroke's Arcadia. Arcadia. That's a pretty famous romance, isn't it? Written by... Uh, Sir Philip Sidney. Sir Philip Sidney. Right. And I've heard it's quite the page turner, full of chivalry and adventure. Seems to have ignited John's passion for literature. Imagine that. Finding such a world of imagination and escape amidst, you know, the daily grind of domestic work. Exactly. And she didn't stop at just reading Sidney. Oh, no. She devoured Milton, explored translations of the classics. Wow. She was a real bookworm, huh? But it's amazing to think that she had the drive and curiosity to complex works. It really is. And all that reading clearly inspired her, because by 1734... She had a whole manuscript of poems ready to go. Wait, hold on. She wrote a whole collection of poems. Right. And she got them published in 1734. That's right. Now, remember, we're talking about the 18th century. Publishing a book back then, it was a massive undertaking. A woman. Oh, absolutely. Especially a woman from her background. We're talking about a time when societal barriers were, shall we say, a bit more rigid? You can say that again. But Jean, she managed to do it. A customs officer named Mr. Drummond really championed her work. See, customs officer. Now, that's interesting. What would have drawn him to poetry? He was just a secret romantic at heart. Either way, he helped Jean secure over 150 subscribers for her book. 150 subscribers? Wow. That's quite a feat. So we're talking merchants, clergymen. I mean, who were these people? All sorts. Other customs officers, even. I guess her work really resonated with folks from different walks of life. Speaks volumes about the power of her poetry, testament to her determination to get her voice heard. Absolutely. And that voice really shines through in her masterpiece, There's Nay Luck About the Hoose. It's such a poignant and relatable poem. Even centuries later, it still tugs at the heartstrings. Okay, I gotta ask, what is it about There's Nay Luck About the Hoose that makes it so special, so enduring? Written in Scott's vernacular gives it this incredible authenticity and warmth. And Jean captures the emotions of a sailor's wife waiting for her husband to return so perfectly. It's all about the anticipation, the anxiety, the relief. Ah, oh, the anxieties of waiting for a loved one to return home safely. A timeless theme, isn't it? It really is. And then there's that foot has music in when he comes up the stair. Just brilliant. You can almost hear the creaking steps and feel the wife's joy. Wow. Yeah, that's powerful imagery. No wonder Robert Burns himself was a fan. Oh, yeah. Big time. He even praised Jean's use of Scott's language, saying it added so much to the poem's emotional impact. 
There you go. Robert Burns. Talk about high praise. Seriously. But sadly, Jean's success was short-lived. Remember that risky business venture I mentioned earlier? The one where she tried to ship her books to Boston? Yep, that's the one. Well, it turned into a financial disaster. Oh, no. That's terrible. But, I mean, shipping Atlantic back then must have been a nightmare. Total nightmare. Storms, pirates, you name it. Plus, who knows if there was even a market for her poems in the colonies. Right. Imagine trying to coordinate all that with no reliable communication or anything. It's hard enough launching a book today. It really is. So sadly, Jean ended up in debt, and, and eventually she had to return to domestic labor. Back to where it all started, in a way. It's tragic, really, to think that someone with so much talent couldn't break free from the economic constraints of her time. It really is. And what makes it even more tragic is that Jean died penniless in Glasgow Poorhouse. Wow. That's just heartbreaking. But you wonder how many other talented artists, writers, thinkers were lost to history because of similar circumstances. It's a question that haunts me every time I think about Jean's life. But I think her story also serves as a reminder to cherish and celebrate the voices that do make it through. Absolutely. We need to remember and honor those eight to express themselves, even when the odds were stacked against them. Exactly. So go out there and discover Jean Adams' poetry for yourselves. Especially, there's Nay Luck About the Hiss. It's a timeless masterpiece that deserves to be read and shared. And who knows? Maybe it'll even inspire you to seek out other hidden gems from history waiting to be rediscovered. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Always a pleasure. Until next time.